myself as Martin Basu. Actually, I'm a bureau from Jos uh, Riom local government in specific, a Bachit, and from a small village called Shono, which unfortunately at this moment is not standing due to to events which attacks uh, from by these flying hadas. Uh, Hartsmen. Anyway, we we are on the way to coming back because we the whole community is trying to build back the community. I like I said I'm a Biron. I was given I was given birth to Mbaki Ladi some years back. I started my education in Barikiladi when I was very much young, at the age of three, which I could not continue because of one event, which I still remember very clearly. I think I was the first day of going to school. I, I went to school. On my way back, I met some people by the tap because I was very thirsty and I needed to get water to drink. So I just went by the tap to get water. That's at the age of three. So. While I was trying to get the water, I remember some bullies came by the tap and asked me to stop taking the water. And I told them, I, already, I was already first here, so why should I stop? And they said they need to get it first before I, I got it. And I said, no, I have to get this water. So there they, they beat the hell out of me. And they took the water. I think that was the first experience when I had to go to school. So from that day on, Onward, I stopped going to school. I remember until the age of six, my parents kept pestering why I, should, I didn't want to go to school. I didn't tell them for days. Even when my mother forced me, because my dad was always busy, you know, going. He was a, a driver. He was always busy going, uh, driving, going one place to the other. So I more or less grew up with my mom. So I, she kept. She was at my neck. Why don't you want to go back to school? And I told her I wouldn't go. So when it, the pestering got to a point, you know, I just imploded one day. I said I was not going to go to school. And she said, why? I said, well, there's a reason. This was my encounter with some bullies, by the way. And I, they promised, they had promised me that any time I went, they saw me going to school, they were going to bully me. And I had to go through that route. So I told her. And she asked me who they were. I was young. I think that was my, more or less my first time seeing them, so I, I could not just tell, tell her exactly who they were. So I stopped going to school then. So until when we left by Kinladi, we came to Riom. So because that was just a transition period, we could, I could not get to go to school because it was a transition. Uh, the Riom local government was newly created, so we just had to move on from by Kinladi to Riom. So there, we were there, my dad just said, well, you're still young, and what was the point going to school when I was not going to put long here? I was intending to leave the job, so why not just stay back, since you're just three or four, why not just stay back when you get to six years old, when I leave this place, you go, you go to where I was looking for a job to go, then you start off freshly, and I said it was okay. So then we went to Kivom, and there he's, he had a job with, uh, Bicot, which was part of NVR, the way the Bicot was a division of Federal Ministry of Health that was responsible for uh, research in trypanosomiasis, you know, excessive flies, sleeping, that, that causes sleeping sickness. So he was working with them. So that was just my first part, the first part of my journey. I get emotional sometimes when I speak about what my life had been through uh, the years. I had always been a resilient kid. I had always been a resilient, I have always been perspective. But the journey through life uh, really got to me at some point that uh, life was miserable. 
I said that was the right word. Life was miserable. But before then, when we went back to Kevon, I started my primary school in St. Andrew's Primary School. You know, my, it was a public uh, school. My mother wanted me to go to a private school, uh, NVRI staff school. I could not go to, to the school. My dad could not allow me to go to school because he already had five kids. He already had uh, uh, six kids. So how could he allow me to go to public school? Being a driver, my mother was, was just a home was, uh, housewife. So the support system wasn't there, so he could not just allow me to go there. So he said, just mind the private school, with the public school. So I went to the public school, St. Andrew's Primary School there. I was there from, from class one to class six. While I was in class four, I wrote exams to Boys High School, Gindry, to Dalo Memorial uh, Secondary School in Foron. I got admission. But my dad was struggling at the, mo at the point. He said, I just could not go. So I said, why? He said, well, I don't have money for now. You, you could see. You know, just give it a little time. So while I was then I stayed through class five, and I wrote again to St. Joseph's College, Vaughan. I wrote there, and I wrote to Boys High School, Gindry, yet still. And I got admission. He still begged me and said, you know what? You're still a young man. Just give it a little time. You can see how I'm struggling. To, 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 to put together the whole family, you know. Just give me a little time, things would get okay. I was a young kid, you know. I could not resist, I could not uh, argue out why I should stay home with him. Why, why I should stay home. So why should I stay home when I, when I already have this one? I could not argue it out. You know, more so he put it, he sat me down because my dad was a very good friend of mine. You know, he taught me so much. You know, he sat me down. He did not force it on me. He said, you know what, this is this. This is this, what do you do? Because I remember I was seeing him off, because from Bicot, he left the job there. He, he got a job with Shand in Shandam with Board of Internal Revenue. While we were in Kivom, he left Bicot, he got the job there. So one day he was leaving, and I saw him off to the bus station. And he was like, you know, this is the reason. I would have allowed you to go to the secondary school in JS in, while in class, from class five. But I, I just, this is my reasons. You can see this is what I am going, this is the problem. Well, he could not open up to tell me certain things, but later on in life, you know, I realized the reasons why he did what he did. And I was thankful, and I'm still thankful for what he did uh, later on. So I had to stay back. The unfortunate thing that happened which I just said prior to now was he did not he didn't want to allow me to go because he was building and now he already knew he had a terminal illness and he didn't want to open up to me at that point now in his own thinking if I let this young man to go to school the money I was going to spend to take him to school um, that money I could as well put it in, in the house I was building because he knew just right that it was terminal and he didn't want a situation where he was no more and we were struggling to pay rent, struggling to go to school. So he wanted to put a house for us. So that even when he is not away, I could be able to have a house and I could only struggle to go to, to school. That was what I saw. So the unfortunate thing is, when I, when I went to class six, I finished, I could not go to school, but he had already built a house and we had already moved out from where we were to the new house he built, but he fell ill. So I had to stay home for years, for two years, I had to stay back home because they were nursing him, there was no money. You couldn't just nurse him at the same time take him to school. So I was just home. So, but in between, while he was ill, his cousin, sort of one of his relations just came and said, you know what, this boy has been home. Why not just let him go to school? You know, he had had good schools, which he knew, you know, because he was best friends with my dad. He already knew, so why not just let this kid go to school? And my dad said, you can see the situation I was in. Now, the best I could, the schools that he wanted to go, I want this kid to go, I can't afford it at this moment, and I'm already ill. 
then his cousin, his relation, sorry, said, okay, I will help you get a school for him. So I remember now, I had to forfeit some of the best schools. I know even the school I went to was one of the top, one well, wasn't the best in the state at, at that moment. But I wanted to either go to San Kuru or go to BSS Ginger or to St. Joseph's because those were the best schools. Those were one of the top schools there. And I wanted to make good my life because I had ambition to be a medical doctor, which I am not, but I'll give the story later. So why I'm not? So I just, I, he helped me to get a, his relation helped me to get admission into uh, Zhang Secondary Commercial School. So there I went after wasting two years, you know, if I added it up plus the years that I was in class five, I had admissions, that would be three years or so, you know. So I lived that off of uh, class four because I think I was still much, much young. So I wasted three or more, three years at home. So when I went to the school, you know, while I was in class one, just the first time, he passed on. So life became a whole new thing together. There, you know, you have a mother who is, who is a, a housewife, and dad passed on, and there are six kids to take care of, seven, because we were six, then we had another one, became, he had another one, then we became seven. And my first, the eldest uh, uh, sister, that was our first child, of my, the first child of my dad, because when she was in JS2, she got pregnant. So when she went to the house, unfortunately, it's one of her teachers that got her pregnant, you know. So my dad could not, we, were, we didn't know much, you know. He sent her back to the, sent her to the, to the man's house. So she went through horrible condition. Seeing what she was going through, my dad had to bring her back home. So automatically we became seven plus her child, we became eight in the house. So, and my dad passing on, it was a horrible thing altogether. You know, a mother who was home, a housewife to take care of eight children in the house, seven of hers, plus the, the, the other child, the, her grandchild, and a half-sister, which we later on got to realize. You know, it was a horrible thing altogether. So now I was in JS1. Life became unbearable. So there I had to devise a means. I sat down with my mom and I seen what she was going through. I sat down with her and said, well, what you go through, you know, you just, you now you have to start a new life, selling one thing or the other, just to keep up with, with raising these children. How do you do it? So, but God, but because of, the experiences I had, even while being a child, you know, at 10 years, nine years, seven, eight years, seven years, I was very close to my dad. So he opened up my understanding to how to become a man. So then I looked at her, she was struggling. I said to her, you know what? Yes, I'm young, but I could do something. And what can I, she said, what can you do? I said, I can do something. And that was why I decided on my own at that tender age that I was going to leave off school on Fridays and sometimes Thursdays. For the Fridays and Saturdays, sometimes Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, I'll go to school Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, JS1. Remember, it's just JS1. Then on Thursdays, sometimes Thursday, but mostly Fridays and Saturdays, I'll go look for menial jobs to do. You know, where they were building, I'll just go there and help them with the mixing. I already knew how to mix because while my dad was building this house, I was supervising because he was not around. So I was supervising, I was seeing what they were doing and I was helping them with the building. So I had already had the experience. So when I went to build, they would ask me, can you do this? And I said, yes, I can. Show us what you can do. So I just showed them what I could do and they allowed me to, to do the job. So at that age, at that tender age, Jay is one, I was helping my mom, you know, I would just raise money and I would help her with it with this and i remember very clearly the sister i just lost about a year over a year about a year ago you know i remember it was one day you know my mom just said you know what the money you had you had raised is about 400 naira so and your sister now is looking for money for ssc what do for jsc what do we do i said don't worry just it's don't worry about it that is just for us to just help keep the family moving 
whatever we could do to help each other, just do it. I will pay the school fees, uh, have registration fee. So that is just how life graduated. You know, I was struggling through school. But one thing I always did and one thing I always knew because I already had this experience, you know, staying with my dad. I was very close with him. So he taught me so many things. He always told me that education is the key to everything. Whatever you do, put first your education and it raise and you take you to places unknown, places you only dreamt of. So I always was very serious with my education. Even though as a child, you know, you had a billions, you know, we just have this thing, you, you were ch you're a kid, you know, you do certain things, you know, growing up, just adolescence, getting to that age of becoming a man. So you have mistakes you make. But I did not gravitate towards making two grave mistakes that I could not recover from them. It's just simple mistakes I made. So then, but I loved football, you know, I loved football and I loved swimming. So then when I was young, I would just go swimming, I would go playing football. That was, so those were some of my vices because my mother hated it that I had to give my time to education. So, but some of my vices is I always sneak out to go to play football and to swim. But in spite of it, when it was exams time, you know, I always, topped the class. I always came first. So she was just wondering, how did I do it? Well, I didn't know how I'd do it because then mother does not ask you to, to go, to go read. You know, she was there, she was not educated. She was barely educated. I, the story she told me is she just went to class one, class two. That was the end of it, you know? So she was barely educated. Yes, she understood that education was the key to success. So that was why she was hard on me to always study, you know. So, but she was all surprised that I was not studying yet. I could just come, I always top the class. She was asking, how did I do it? Did I always used to read? One thing I always did was, once I'm in the classroom, I, pay, I paid rapt attention to whatever the teacher was teaching. And I had this sneaky way of doing things, you know, revising, memorizing what they taught me. And I had a way of, you know, working on, solving things in my head when I was much younger. So I was always doing that. So things were always much easy for me. So I was doing that. I think I only got the second position when I was in class five, the second term, which I cried hell. You know, my dad was like, why are we crying? I said, well, I got second. And I remember very clearly what happened. The guy that got the first position was the guy that had the best craft. You know, then they would ask you to just have craft, you know, as this one as one of the subjects. I, what we used to do was just to buy brooms, you know, and just make certain crafty things with the brooms. Mine, I didn't have the time because I was playing football. We had a match, a day that I was supposed to, a match, a, a day prior to submitting the craft. I didn't sit down to do what I needed to do because I had a football match. When I, had, when I played the match, I came home, I was already tired. So I think I got 56, and my friend, the guy that got the top position, Nansel, I still remember his name very clearly. You know, he got the first position. He had about 78 in his craft, so he beat me with just a certain point. So I cried and I said I was never going to get the second position again, which I did not do until I left the school. So, you know, now secondary school, you know, it was crazy. You know, it was just crazy. I was just moving on. I was doing very well, very well. So then it started coming to my consciousness that now I was becoming a man. Becoming a man now, I needed to read my books. So then I, just, I could just come home, read my books. And I kept getting flying colors. I kept getting the best out of it, out of my education. But going to SS1, I met up with some friends. They were really bad friends per se, but they were just people who kind of snuck me away. You know, they kind of snuffed me away from, from giving more attention to my books to, you know, music. You know, he is still, one of them is still my best friends to this moment. You know, always taking my mind away from, from my books to music. So in SS1, I discovered that I was getting backward. I was getting backward and my mother started getting worried because it started seeing like, is this boy not getting backward, you know? So, but because I was getting backward, going to play with my friends, sometimes I'll go to places where they smoke and my eyes would just get all red. So they started telling her that I was smoking, which I never did to this moment, you know. 
she, would, she started coming to me, you know, SS1, SS2, that they say you smoke. And I said, I don't smoke. Who tells you that? I said, no, I don't smoke. I don't. And she said, no, you smoke. I said, I don't smoke. So she never believed me because my eyes were always red. And I was going out with my friends, you know, to go and to go and to go to places, you know, and, and play with. So I my I was drifting from my education to music. But then something happened that jolted me off this patch, which was when my result came, I got second position, you know, that was in SS2, first time. And the lady that got the first, you know, we were there through our JS1, JS2. She's a brilliant person. Even though we're not in the same class, she was in another class when we were in JS classes. But I was always the best student all through my JS classes. The whole, the whole JS class, the whole JS1, a to E, I was always the best. So when we got to SS1, you know, I deviated a little bit. And more so, the demand of JS, SS classes were, more, were different because you needed to study. And my mother needed, hadn't the money to give me textbooks, to buy textbooks. I never had a textbook from JS1 to SS, to SS3. It was in SS3 that one of my cousins gave me textbooks. And I said, when he gave me the textbook, I told my mother, I said, well, this is what he told you, but I promise you one thing. I won't get anything less than an A in any of my courses, in any of my subjects. I said, do you promise? And I said, I promise you that. I won't get anything less than an A. So, but back to what JS, SS2. So when I saw it, the lady that came first, she was deserving because I was not giving my time to my books. But the lady that came third was her friend. But I, I was able to eavesdrop one of the things, one thing she said. You know, when she was talking, she never knew I was behind her. So I, I heard what she said. So how could she believe that Martins would beat her to the second position? When I heard that, I didn't say anything. I just went back to me. You know, when I came back home, you know, it came back to me that, whoa, you know, this lady that was nothing, she could say this thing. I said, okay, I just needed to do something. You know, to show them that I have disturbing me. I was just drifting away because something was taking, else was taking my time, my music and my uh, football, you know. So I went back to reading, especially third term, you know. I went back to reading. Okay, I remember second term, some, a, a, a policy came that there was no more putting results, you know, in your, in your result sheet. So, when I heard that, so I just relaxed. I said, don't worry, even if she beat me, she wouldn't know. So, but something in me still came back. I said, well, I can't just, I am going, I am leaving school. And I can't, my mother cannot afford to give me school. And sometimes I go to work and I come back tired and I can't do anything. This money I earn is so hard. So why should I let myself down? Why should I let, let, let my mother down? Why should I let my siblings down? I said to myself, you know what? I'm going to be the best that I can be. So in SS2, third term, more so I was given the head, the head prefect of the school. I said, well, everybody, I became now a reference to so many people. And I somehow just said to myself, I won't let myself down, I won't let people down. And I remember one teacher that, that till this moment has had the best impact on me. One of the teachers, two, but one was in primary school, one was in secondary school. The one in secondary school is Mr. Pam Tari. Nobody had the, the greatest effect on me like him because he believed in me. He believed in me so much more than I believed in myself. I remember the first day I was given the prefect and I was asked to speak on the assembly ground, you know, and when I went up, you know, it was unscripted. I just went up and I spoke. When I, I was just about coming down, he just grabbed me, he tapped me on the back, said, I always believed in you. That was what he told me. So that thing just gave me this impetus. It gave me this thing that, you know, there are people who look up to me. So when I went, when I was given that prefect, and especially third time uh, to, uh, to uh, SS2, I said to myself, you know what? I just, I, I can't afford to fail. I just can't afford to fail. So what I did was, I went back. My cousin was 
the, my cousin who gave me those textbooks, I thanked him a lot. So I went back, I said, well, you know what? I don't, I have to tell my mother that, you know what? I would give you the best. I will be the best that I can be. I won't let you down. Whatever they told you, whatever they tell you, is because they don't, they don't see it my way. You know, as a young man growing up, there are things, you know, when you become, a, you're becoming a man in adolescent age, you know, there are things you no more tell your mom, you know, there are things you begin to do that sometimes now you sit back, you see them and you just laugh at them. So it's just crazy. So when I told her that she relaxed a little bit, so I, that was when, that was when I, I understood what it meant to read, to study. I went into studying that sometimes when I went to the classroom, when the teachers were teaching, I was just like, I'd just be laughing at what they were teaching because I already knew what they were teaching and even more than what they were teaching because I had the textbook. So I studied ahead of them and I went deeper because I had always been this type that I didn't want to just roll things in my head, just cram things in my head. No, I needed to understand everything I was studying. So that was just how it, 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 it was. So I was reading, you know, 12 hours, sometimes 12 hours in a day. I was always studying, always studying, always studying. To the point that my mother would sometimes come to my room and she would just close the textbook and say, come on, my friend, go and sleep. So my eyes, so sometimes it became so, so much that when I went to school, some of the teachers started seeing me as, um, I was smoking more and more. They did not understand that I was studying more and more in my house because it was a day school, so at home I was studying more and more. SS2, SS3 when we were writing mock exams. I could not, my mother could not pay my school fees and my uh, registration fees. So when I was about to write the mock exams, I was sent home. And I they already started writing, I think they wrote two papers already and I missed them. And I came home. I said, this is what happened. When my mother just looked at me, that was the first time I saw her cry. She cried, you know, that there's nothing she can do. That she tried all the best she could. She had already paid what she could and she just can't raise the rest of it. And how much was it? It was two, it was 1,005. She had already paid 1,000. They couldn't let me for five, over 500 naira. So I had to go back, you know, I trekked home from almost like 20 kilometers coming to tell her this story. And I had exams to write. When I told her, she said there was nothing she was going to do. I had to trek back another 20 kilometers to go back to see what I could do. So when I'm going back, I just went and met the Mr. Pamter and I told him, so this is what is happening. He said, why didn't you tell me? I said. I, I didn't want to disturb you because he had done so much for me. So he said, let's go. So he went, he met them, he said, you can't, you know, he, he, he chided them, he said, you can't just let one of your best students down at this trying time. How could you just let this guy go? And it was just crazy, you know, it was just crazy. So that was how they let me write the, the, the exams, the third exams, it was English. So I wrote the, the exams, I had already missed two. I wrote it, life went on, you know, horribly. You know, it's a story that sometimes it, it beats, I still tell this story to anybody, I, anybody who cares to listen, that life is just what you make of it. That however, however terrible it is, you know, if you can look for the, for the, for the person in you, if you can look for the God in you, you can make it through whatever obstacles. So that's how life just went. Fortunately for me, she didn't, she didn't, she did not have to pay my registration, my work registration fee, because I remember very clearly in my JS2, I represented my school as the best students in science school group because there, when Tap, when one of the governors was the, I think Tap Gun was the, was the, was the governor. There was this competition for the best students from all schools in Plateau State. So I represented my school there. So for those of us that, that, that represented, we were given scholarships, especially for the one that came first, second, and third while there in San Francisco Cruz. So I was lucky that I came second, you know, in Plateau State. So that's how it went. 
you know, they had already paid my registration fee, so my mother did not have to worry about paying my registration fees. So why it came, I was studying, I was studying, I was studying. So when it came, I think it was very easy for me because I had already told my mother I was not going to get anything less than an A. You know, B, less than an A, you know. So while, the, while students were studying, I was just busy playing football. Now I will just write the math and I'll come back home, you know. I wouldn't worry to open the book again. I'll just go to the football field, just play my football. When I come back in the evening, I'll just brush it off. I'll just, I'll just brush it up. Once if I brush it up, then I'll just, you know, go sleep. Then the next morning, I'll just go write the paper. So after I wrote the papers, you know, and one unfortunate thing that's still to this moment, Affect, affects me, you know, which I, even after coming, after becoming this man that I am, it's still in my head, is, is this. I wrote the white very well, and I was expecting A's, all A's, but something happened. When the wire came out, when the result came out, my name was not on the list. That was the first trouble. And I went to the school and I said to them, well, my name is not on the list, my result is not out, why, why so? And they said, the white people said I cheated during exams. I said, well, did anybody ever catch me cheating during the exams? Because I went to meet the principal, I met the dean, and I told him the dean of, uh, dean of studies, I think. I said, well, did anybody ever catch me cheating? He said, no. So my result did not come out. So what are you guys going to do? You know, I hate to say this, I hate to say this, they were careless about it, they were really careless about it, and I felt at some point, is it because I'm not one of your children, that is why you just allow me to, to, to go through what I was going through, because I became emotionally down, I became depressed at that tender age. Meanwhile, I had already written my, my jam, I, I got admission into ATB Bauchi to study electrical engineering. Um, I got one in FUT Mina to study chemical engineering. So I was waiting for my wife to come for just me to just resume school by, by September or October. So my wife never came. My mother became worried. Ah, why is your wife not out? Everybody's wife is out. I told her this is not out and I, they are not telling me anything. So we had to go to the principal. The least the principal could tell me was, you know what, you have to go to Lagos. My mother had to go to Lagos. I said, go to Lagos. My mother was not educated, and we didn't have the money to go to Lagos to work office in Lagos. What are you saying? Can't any one of you send one of our staff to go to Lagos and get this result for me? Knowing that I did not cheat, because there's nowhere that, that they wrote that I cheated. So why can't you go to Lagos and get my result? So because of it, you know, it kept me at home for solid three years. They kept telling me this thing is going to be all right. The result, they had written to Lagos, you know, they, they had written to work in Lagos, so my result is going to come out. I should just give them a little time. Meanwhile, I, my mother had not the money one for me to write another work. And secondly, there was this hope that the result was going to come out. And I knew that once if the result was coming out, I knew that I was going to pass every, every, everything. So I was waiting, I was counting, I was counting on those two things, hope, and the second thing was my mother had the money to give me for, to write another wire. So life just went on this, this horribly. And it was just, we kept waiting, 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 waiting. And I assure you, because my mother had hope, because she had hope, because she had hope, she hung on to the hope. But as time went on, she became depressed. And when she became depressed, she got stroke. And that was, what, that was one of the things that led to her death.